Hello, and welcome to People Saw Fluid, Zero to Hero in 45-ish minutes, instead of 60, 45-ish works too, uh, presented by our good friend Jim Marion. Uh, my name is Scott Lavery, uh, Head of Marketing here at Appsian, and I'd like to thank you for your participation in today's PeopleSoft Innovation Summit. Uh, before we kick things off, I just have a few housekeeping notes for you. Uh, everyone is on mute. Uh, the session is being recorded and will be posted on the registration landing page for free on-demand viewing. Uh, that will probably be within the next week or so, so keep your eye on out for that. Uh, the session today will be 45-ish minutes, according to Jim, um, and we will have some time for Q&A. Uh, Jim will certainly be monitoring that, uh, but if you have any additional questions, you can certainly reach out to, to Jim or you can reach out to uh, the administrator just by putting a question in the chat panel or the question panel on the right side of your screen. Uh, so with that, uh, let's go ahead and turn things over to Jim to begin today's presentation. Jim. Hey, thanks, Scott. Thanks for that introduction. So uh, the topic today, uh, Zero to Hero, and you know, you probably saw that the original title said Zero to Hero in 60 minutes, but when I saw Scott's invite that said 45, I thought, oh no, <laughs> that means I have to speak really fast or something to make you a hero in 60 minutes in 45. <laughs> For those of you that I haven't had the opportunity to meet yet, just a little bit about me briefly. I've been in the PeopleSoft community for roughly 20 years. I'll just tell you, I've kind of lost track. Uh, I know when I started working for Oracle, though, because I count that by the age of one of my children. S same year, born the same year as I started with Oracle. How cool is that? Anyway, five years as a customer, so I have the same experiences as you, uh, maintaining upgrades, implementing PeopleSoft, etc., as well as another 10 years with Oracle, uh, getting to work behind the curtain, seeing, well, you know, as I say, how the sausage is made, and I still love it, even after that. Uh, I'm the author of a handful of People Tools books, so if you didn't meet me at a conference, perhaps you have one of my books on your shelf as well, or perhaps you know us from our very popular blog, People Tools blog. Uh, what do I do today? I teach people tools training. So in fact, the material I'm going to share with you today comes from our fluid material. Uh, so for example, we have a fluid course coming up here soon. This is one segment out of one chapter of that training material. Uh, we've also recorded it, have it, have it available. The entire training class is available online on demand as well. So if you're interested in learning more, uh, you can contact us uh, or sign up, register for one of our classes, or even take one of our on-demand courses to get the same material uh, or in-depth material. So anyways, uh, what are we going to build in this session? So we're going fluid zero to hero in 45-ish minutes. We need to build something. That's how we're going to get hand or our best experience understanding people software fluid. And so what are we going to build? So what I have on my screen there is a page. What is that I want to build? Uh, we see it has three group boxes at the top there. Okay, interesting. Uh, the main thing is that the fields are horizontally aligned. Now, I know if you have classic experience, which most people who come to Fluid come from classic, you're thinking to yourself, how would I build this in classic? And you've already probably got a plan in mind. Okay, starts with the data model. Okay, after the data model, I drag and drop fields on the page. And I drag and drop two here, I drag and drop two there, and then I go all the way to the end, and I drag and drop two more over there, right? Uh, that's how you'd build this in Classic. Uh, down here we have grids. These grids, those would be our level one. The top would be level zero. Level one is related to level zero by, and you know the answer to that, don't you? Keys. Level one has the exact same key structure as level zero, plus at least one additional key field. That's the relational rule for PeopleSoft. We know that. What I want to help you with today is how do we get from classic to fluid? Because we all have a classic background and classic experience. How do we take what we know about classic and apply that to fluid? That's where we're going to start. So I'm going to go into application designer now and give me just a second here. Launch application designer. Just in case you didn't notice there, it is a PUM35, so it's relatively recent HR PUM35. I pre-created my data model, so we have all the records necessary to build a solution. Uh, the level zero and the level one records, they're all here. All we need to do is just start dragging and dropping onto a page. So I'm gonna create a new page. Oh wait, wait, we're supposed to be creating a fluid page, aren't we? 
Some of you have fluid experience. I know you do. And you saw what I just did. And you're like, oh, wait, he made a mistake. Oh, the poor guy, he's on camera and he made a mistake. <sighs> Maybe did it on purpose. So I've got a page there. That looks a lot like a classic page, doesn't it? Okay, let's see. Let's start a new Fluid page. So those of you that worked a little bit with Fluid, or maybe perhaps you've been in a People Tools release after 854 and you saw, hey, there's a page option and there's a page Parents Fluid. And you thought to yourself, oh, what is that? A new object type, huh? Okay, well, let's try it out. So the new object type, uh, PeopleSoft asks me, what's the layout that you want for this new page that you're creating? I see a handful of layouts here. Let me explain those to you really quickly, just as kind of helping you understand differences between classic and fluid. First off, what's a layout? It's a starting point. A classic page appears for you. You get an empty canvas. It's not saved. We can see that in the background. Uh, there's no content on it. You can't even save it for that matter because there is no content. You can't save a page without any content. Just an empty canvas there in the background. Okay, in the foreground here, it's asking me, what layout do you want to choose? Basically, what's your starting point for your fluid solution that you're building? So we have to answer that question. What is it we're trying to build and what do we want it to look like? Well, I see from, what are my options? <laughs> That's the question I would have first. Uh, I can see here a handful of layouts at the top. They start with B, B, N, E, what's that? Benefits, H, C, human capital, H, R, human resources. Underneath that, I see all these PSLs. These top four, ignore them, ignore them. They're Oracle delivered in the HR system, probably built by the HR applications team as the People Tools team was building Fluid, meaning the HR team didn't have layouts to start with, so they created their own. You and I today, we benefit from People Tools and from all of the information the apps teams have fed back to the People Tools team, and we have all of these layouts that are essentially the same as those HR specific layouts at the top. Uh, so let's see, what are some important ones here? So. PSL apps content, that's the absolute simplest layout. That's the one we're going to use today. That's basically your no layout layout. Uh, let's see, we have PSL panel nav. That would be for the left-hand side panel. Uh, let's see, there's another one, panel content, very similar, left or right, just kidding, only for the left. Uh, PSL simple, anyone heard of drop zones? How could you not hear of drop zones? Yeah, so the, the PSL simple SBP is primarily, it's a, it's a sub page. So if you're creating, Fluid subpages, that's going to be the layout that you're going to use. And well, a drop zone is always a subpage. So that's the layout you're going to use for a drop zone. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? There's a PSL2 panel. PSL2 panel gives you a left hand panel with transaction content. Now, that's 854. 855, we have the, the left panel, the right panel, and a whole bunch of other options, master detail, everything. Lots of other options available. You don't see the PSL2 panel used very much today. It's used when you have a two panel layout for one page in the component. But if that left panel is supposed to exist for multiple pages in the component, we usually create the left panel using PSL panel nav or PSL panel content instead, and then add that to the component. Anyway, that's a whole nother lesson. Let's skip that one. And let's go right into creating some basic content using the no layout layout, PSL apps content. I'll choose that. Oh, look at that. It's asking me to save. Now you remember when I created that classic layout or <laughs> the classic page, it didn't ask me to save, did it? We can see it in the background there. It's not saved. What does that mean? Well, if you're in the middle of developing an app designer crashes, you'll lose everything, right? So save early, save often. We know that, we do that. Oops, you do that, don't you? <laughs> anyway, there's a save as here. Huh. So it's asking me to save before I start. We need a name for this. How about Innovation Summit, IS? And then, oh, well, what's the purpose of this? You know, I didn't, I didn't talk about that. It doesn't really matter the purpose. We're really focused on the layout and design. What's the difference between classic and fluid from a layout and design perspective? That's my focus here. But the purpose is travel preferences. You know, me, uh, well, I used to travel a lot. <laughs> I don't even remember what the inside of a plane looks like. I actually, I actually went out and bought some airplane food for myself. <laughs> I bought some airplane snacks so that I could feel like, get the, the feeling of traveling again, what it used to be like. Anyways, uh, IS, let's go with uh, Trav, Pref, and then a suffix of FL, FL for fluid. See, when you're creating those pages, which the thing, thing you've been doing for the last 20 years, creating pages in people's app applications for the classic user experience, you didn't provide a suffix. You don't have to provide a suffix. In fact, today, even with fluid, you don't have to provide a suffix, but we do. 
to help others who come after us. See, if you look at the number of pages that are in PeopleSoft today, now mind you, that's today. I know it's changing and it's changing over time. But today, about 95% of the components that exist inside PeopleSoft applications are still classic. The 5 to 7%, starting from manager self-service to employee self-service, working its way backwards. That 5 to 7% is fluid, but the back office today is still primarily classic. That's about 95% of the PeopleSoft application. 93 to, well, anyway, over 90% of the PeopleSoft application is still classic. So fluid is clearly the, the exception. So what I'm doing here is marking the exception so that anyone who comes after me, they look at that and say, oh, that page was meant for fluid. Okay. So let's see, do you wish to save a copy of the people code? Huh? You know, I've seen that question asked of me before. It's asked of me whenever I'm cloning something. Interesting, in fact, if you look in the background here, PSL apps content, that's the layout I chose. It's open in the background. What does that mean? It means that PeopleSoft is actually cloning a definition. Wait, what? Okay, control N, new dialog pops up asking me what kind of new object do I want to create? I chose page fluid. Did it create a new object? Or did, oh, well, then that list came up, the templates list. That templates list, the one I selected, it's open in the background here. So that quote new object, page fluid, you know what I think? Looking at this, it looks to me like it's a, it's a, it's a macro. It's a automation to automate opening PSL apps content, file save as, and then changing the page type from layout to standard. That's really all it is. You know, you've seen the page parens fluid as a new object type. I'm going to show you here in class. It is not a new object type. It is just an automation macro to make it, to simplify for you and I, opening an existing definition, cloning that exi existing definition, and using that existing definition as the starting point for our own content. Now, I've seen people say, oh, it's just a macro. Who needs the macro? And they'll open the layout, file open, open PSL apps content, and then forget to do a save as and start working in it. Oops, don't want to do that. Or they'll do a save as, but they forget to change the page type, and then they can't figure out why they can't add it to their component. Why? Because it's a special page type. It's a layout page. Oops. So even though I'm telling you this, I'm telling you it's just a macro for convenience. Use it. It is convenient. Use it. Don't just open PSL apps content and do a file save as. Absolutely 100%. You can do that. But why would you when we have a convenience macro for a reason? Anyway, to answer this question, do you also, do you wish to also save a copy of the people code associated with PSL apps content? That's a fabulous question. You know, I actually don't know how to answer that. Here's why. Here's why I don't know how to, how to answer that. Actually, I do know. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes because if Oracle added people code to these layouts, chances are I want it. But I'll tell you right now, there's no people code in these layouts. So yes or no, you're going to get the same result. No people code. I'm going to say yes just in case. Someday there might be some people code. Hey, trick question for you. If you copy PSL Simple SVP or choose to create a page from PSL Simple SVP, chances are you're creating a subpage. Here's a trick question for you. Do you want to copy people code? Give me a yes or no. Go ahead and write that in chat um, a, or, or put that in the Q&A. What do you think? If I'm creating a subpage, should I say yes or no to copy people code? What do you think? I love the answers there. Yeah, yeah. So I'm getting it all over the all over the map there. Okay. Somebody said it doesn't matter. Actually, so here's the thing. Pages have one event. It's page activate. And page activate does not trigger for sub pages. So I say no. I say no because what's the point of copying in people code that you know will never trigger? If I were to copy in that people code, it would purely be nostalgic. It would be, so I have some sort of a history of what people code would have run if this wasn't a subpage. But the fact that it's a subpage means it won't trigger. So what does that tell you about drop zones? There are no page events for drop zone content. Now you can still map into, but what you're mapping into for the page activate for drop zone content is you're mapping into the 
top level page, which can actually be a little bit tricky to figure out when you have subpages with subpages with subpages with drop zones. What's the top level page? You actually have to investigate and figure it out. Oh, that's another lesson anyway. Okay, great. So I have this page here. Let's see. Let's move this up here so you can all see. Oh, hold on. Before we go any further, uh, let's see. Let's give a little bit more room on the screen. All right, you guys, I want you to tell me, what are the differences between the content on the left and the content on the right? So the classic on the left and the fluid on the right. Tell me, what do you see for differences there between those two? All right, I got somebody saying group box. Yeah, there's a group box on the right. Let's put a group box on the left. Oh, that was weird. Okay, group box on the left. Okay, and let's clear the label. Awesome. Okay, they look the same now. Dots. Somebody said dots. Okay, what else do I see? That's it. That's the only difference, isn't it? Now what differences are there between the two? None. None. I think that's critical. Why do I think that's critical? You have bolt-ons, you have custom pages you've built. And someday you're thinking, you're talking about this already. If you're not already doing it, you're talking about it. How do we migrate from classic to fluid? That's a great question. The answer is start from classic. You already have classic. What's the difference between classic and fluid? A group box. Okay, that's your starting point. If you want to tran transform from classic to fluid, drag a group box around your outer content. That's step one. Actually, I'm going to show you a little bit later. There's a step one. It happens at the component level. This would technically be step two, but when you're looking at pages, at the page level, that's step one for transforming from classic to fluid. Drag a group box around the outside. What about the dots? They don't matter. The dots don't render. Whether you see the dots or you don't see the dots, it doesn't matter. The only reason we don't see dots in fluid is because the People Tools team recognize that dots are irrelevant. Why put them there? In fact, we don't want people to depend on the dots because the dots don't do anything in Fluid. In Classic, they're here to help us align items. Anyone guilty of counting dots? I am. <laughs> I am. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Awesome. They're vertically aligned. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and start designing our page. Okay. Let's grab our fields. And let's see, I'm going to grab my level zero fields here for my level zero record. Based on the wireframe that I created earlier, what you saw on the screen, I'm going to start dragging and dropping. So I have the airline fields at the top here. And oh, look at how perfect he's being and dropping those so they all line up nicely. Let's see, a hotel that kind of goes in the center. Car, which is in the middle here, actually goes on the right side. That's a little bit weird. Oh, look at how sloppy he's being all of a sudden. He's not paying any attention anymore. I mean, look at that. Those should be vertically aligned, shouldn't they? I mean, they were in the wireframe. Shame on him for being so sloppy. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's add the grid here. And let's drag and drop. Let's go with at least one of our, based on time, since we have to ch cut short that 15 minutes, I can only make you a, a hero in 45. We'll just do one grid. <laughs> One of the tricks I have for grids is you just drag and drop the whole record, and then when we're ready, we'll delete. Now, this is People Tools 858. I don't want Ample ID here. Ample IDs are level zero. Uh, the level zero key, my level one keys are going to be Ample ID plus program name. Don't need the don't need to show my level zero key. It would be seen at level zero. Uh, so I'm just going to drop that one. You know, interesting thing. If you haven't made it to 857 yet, 857 and 858, the change happened in 857. It shocked me. I hit the delete key on my keyboard. First time I upgraded 857, and you know, I've got a field highlighted there. It didn't do anything. I thought, what? is isn't deleting anything. And then I looked and I noticed, oh, wow, look at that. 857 and later, they have a modifier key for that. It's control delete. What? <laughs> you know, I kind of wonder because every change to people tools should be related to something. I mean, it's been delete for the last 20 years. Now it's control delete? Did somebody file a bug saying, I'm really struggling. I have this bad habit of accidentally deleting fields. Can you fix that for me? <laughs> what led to that? Anyway, it's control delete now. So control key and then delete key. All right, cool. You know what? Let's test it. We have some fields on the page here. 
let's see what it's going to look like. So let's save it and let's create a new component so we can see what it's going to look like. And let's grab our page, drop it into the component. We should, of course, change the item label. My travel preferences. We'll do this in a self-service. Uh, let's see, we need a search record here. Mm, that's a good question. What should we use for the search record? I don't want to create one. We only have 45 minutes. Uh, so let's see, how about we, is there one we can use? HR self, no, it's HRSS, HRSS pers. Do you see the HR in front of that? You know what that means? You're not going to find it in financials. Oh. Anyway, let me tell you how it works so you can recreate one in financials because it's super easy. You know, I can't even remember if it's in Campus Solutions. The fact that Campus is HR, haha, um, it probably should be there. I just don't remember if it is or not. Uh, so the basically, it's a it's a record that has Opera ID as a key field, but not a search key. An Ample ID is marked as a key and a search key. The PeopleSoft framework, when it finds Opera ID marked as a key and not a search key, Opera ID is a magic field. Opera ID marked as a key but not a search key, PeopleSoft will automatically add the Opera ID as part of the WHERE clause. So it'll say select from whatever the table happens to be. So select Ample ID from PS Opera Defin, where Opera ID equals, and it will put, it'll pass a bind variable in there, whoever I'm logged in as. That's your perfect employee self-service search. It's always going to select the logged in user. That's how all self all row level security works in PeopleSoft. Uh, SJTs, the security join tables and all of that, it's all based off Opera ID, making Opera ID a key field but not a search key. Whoa, cool, who'd have thought? Anyway, you know what else? Since this is self-service, let's go ahead and take off ad mode. Okay, cool. We've got enough here, we can test this thing. IS, TRAV, PREF, FL, and let's see, we need to register this. Let's see, I have a menu here. Let's go ahead and drag and drop into the menu. You know, you could use the component registration wizard to add to a menu, but I'll have to tell you. Uh, by the way, I'm going to keep that as a very, well, let's go ahead and let's rename it. Let's relabel it. I like to drag and drop into the menu rather than using the component registration wizard for the, for the menu. Why? You ever seen that this object's been updated by another user? It's usually the menu, and it's usually after using the component registration wizard? Yeah. Why is that? Because the component registration wizard updates the menu and I update the menu manually. I have to open the menu anyway because the component registration wizard sets the menu label to be the, the component name. That's not helpful. So let's do this. IS trav pref travel preferences. Do this demo this all the time. So I have other prefixes out there. So IS will just help me. IS innovation summit. You know, I usually use the initials for the conference itself. There's another letter there that I probably should be using if that's the case, but I put those three letters together and thought, oh, never mind. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's change this menu here. It's uh, JSM Fluid. Isn't that the one that I chose? Yeah. And let's see. Where do, what do we want to call Well, PTFL People Tools. What is that? That's the PeopleSoft Applications folder. I'm going to go ahead and use that one. Basically, what this is going to do, when I register this component into the portal registry, it's going to register it into a special folder that it suddenly becomes a tile. Now, there's no such thing as a tile. Oh, wait, did he say that out loud? I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I offended anyone there. Uh, basically, a tile is just a content reference that lives in the right place. That's it. That's all the tile is. So by putting this content reference in the correct location, 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 in the portal registry, it suddenly becomes visible as a tile. Should you do that? Should you publish your components as tiles? That's a great question. I mean, hey, it's fluid. De-emphasize the nav bar. De-emphasize menu-based navigation. You shouldn't have to memorize the path anymore. Go with business process-based navigation, which all starts with tiles, doesn't it? You log in, there are your tiles. But hey, did you hear that? Business process-based tiles. Is your business process one component? If the answer is yes, then yes, publish your component as a tile. But a tile should launch a business process. A tile should not launch a component. In this case, we're going to shortcut the process. We're going to pretend we have a one component business process. Why do I say that? There are 7,000 components in the HR system. Tell me, how many tiles do you want on your homepage? Yeah, not 7,000. Didn't think so. 
OK, cool. Let's see. Uh, content reference label. Let's go with is tra travel preferences. And for the long description, hey, why not? Same thing. Why? Because you never see it anyway. You know what? I'd love to expand upon the node here. The Basically, what I'm going to tell you is don't use default local node. Oh, I know. Some of you have been using it forever. Why? I don't have time to tell you. <laughs> you know what else you shouldn't use? Don't use PSFTHR. In fact, if you have a node named PSFTHR in your HRMS system, or one named PSFTASA, or one named PSFTCS, or one named PSFTEP, or one named PSFTPA, change it. You shouldn't have any nodes named PSFT underscore anything. Go back and look at the implementation guide. It'll tell you that. You know, today it's less it's less important with the check token ID and other things people are doing for security. But anyway, that's another discussion. I'll set that aside. Keep going with Fluid here. Uh, PTPT1000, that's going to let everybody have access to this component. That's awesome for now. That's basically my employee self-service. Let's test it out. Let's see what it looks like. And let's see. I'm go You know, we said employee self-service. Let's go ahead and add it to employee self-service homepage. And let's add a tile. I'm going to look for IS. There's a lot of ISs out there, isn't there? IS travel preferences. There it is. Let's move it up here somewhere that we'll actually be able to see it. That's cool. That's a good spot. Save it. No image yet. It's using the default Oracle logo. That's fine. We could fix that later. We talk about that in our Fluid class. Anyway, I just wanted to drill you in here so you could see our Fluid page. We started from a Fluid layout, didn't we? What do you think? Classic or Fluid? Is this classic or fluid? We started from a fluid page. It should be fluid, shouldn't it? I don't see any answers there in chat. I'll just I'll just answer it. It's classic. You know it is. It's not even classic plus. It's classic. Look at the alignment. Ugh, that's horrible. Where'd this guy learn to develop? Yeah. Some of you are noting there in the in the QA. To the property level. The component property. The component controls the rendering engine. See, Fluid is a new rendering engine for PeopleSoft applications. We have the classic rendering engine, we have the Fluid rendering engine. And the component determines which one we use. OK, now, is there such thing as a Fluid page? No. There's only a Fluid rendering engine controlled by the component. The, the page itself can be classic. The page can be fluid. There's no difference. You know, do you want to start from a fluid layout? Awesome. Do you already have classic content? And you're saying, hey, you know, I could recreate all of that starting from the bottom up with a fluid layout. Don't. Don't. You don't need to. Drag and drop a group box over your existing classic content. I'll take a minute here and I'll show you what's in that group box. There's really, I like to, I basically say there's no such thing as a fluid page. Now, I know that's not fair because there is a checkbox on the page properties that marks this as a fluid page, which then you could say technically there is such thing as a fluid page. But a classic page and a fluid page, what's the difference between the two? A checkbox. And it has absolutely nothing to do with how the content renders at the end. It just has to do with development. That's it. I say that because we have a lot of classic pages out there, and I want you to know, hey, what's the difference between classic and fluid? It's a very fine line. OK, here, let's, uh, re let's reload this content. Oops, did he save? Nope. OK, awesome. It's now rendering in Fluid. Oh, that's so much better, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. It's not better. Here, we got to fix this. OK, let's see. We have the fields here at the top. Let's see. Car is listed first. Car was on the left-hand side. I would have thought it would, uh, if, if it was going to stack the fields, I thought that it would have stacked the fields on the left, then the fields in the middle, and then the fields on the right. That's how I thought it would have worked. But it looks like it just kind of weaved them all together, doesn't it? I've got a car field, I've got an air field, I've got a hotel field, a car, air, hotel. What's up with that? Let's go back to Application Designer and let's see if we can figure that out. So at the page level, we see that hmm, car is listed higher. OK. What does that have to do with anything? Well, let's see. I dropped this field first. First. I dropped it first. OK. So if we look at the Order tab, since I dropped seating first, it has a field ID of 2. Then we see the field ID of 3, the field ID of 4, and the field ID of 5. Field ID doesn't matter. Field ID is irrelevant. What matters is the tab order. See, tab order number 2 is car size. Why is that? Because I dropped it higher. So you drop a field on the page, it gets a, it's assigned an or, a tab order. Now, if you drop a field beside it, 
it shows up in the tab order below. If you drop it below, it shows up in the tab order below. If you drop it above, even if it's to the right, it shows up above in the tab order. It shifts everything else down in the tab order. Tab order is critical. So here's one of the things that I found with Classic that was kind of annoying. And that was that tab order in Classic did not follow the logical rendering order. So in Fluid, the logical rendering order follows the tab order. It, layout has absolutely nothing to do with, with rendering order. It's all about the order. So if we want to fix the order of those fields on the screen, we need to fix them here. So I tell people in our Fluid class, uh, the two most important rules of Fluid is containment and order. And that makes a WYSIWYG style editor like we use here, like we used for Classic, makes it a little bit awkward. Because from this editor here, I can see containment. That would be what fields are contained inside what group boxes, etc. But I can't see order. I have to intentionally go to the order tab. Now, interesting, the, the, the order tab has a, has a, um, it can be overridden as well. So I should first say containment and then second is order. I have no containment here. All these fields are at the same level. There are no group boxes or anything yet. So it's all the same order or it's at the same level. So that's why we're seeing it. But it, once you throw some group boxes in there, containment comes first and then order. So the order of those two items within the group box would be dependent on the order tab, not the visual rendering of how you drop or how you move those fields around on the screen. So you might think to yourself, oh, I dropped that one too high. Let's move it down. Well, if you do that, go to the order tab and flip it as well. Uh, let's see. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and shut these, set these to short labels. Why? Well, Fluid is supposed to be for mobile, right? I'll tell you this, though. Fluid is not mobile. You may have heard, hey, Fluid, I want, I want to build a mobile solution. Hey, let's build it in Fluid. Fluid has the potential to be mobile, but don't make the mistake and think that just because I went with Fluid, it is going to be a mobile solution. In fact, when you build for Fluid, your first result is going to be desktop, even if you build it for Fluid by default. It defaults to desktop. It's really actually kind of weird. If you want these to render properly on Fluid, you have to add a snippet of people code, every single Fluid component. I think that's a little bit weird. Sometimes I wonder, why didn't they just build that into the framework? They didn't. I mean, I guess it's because it's saving something if you are actually building Fluid for desktop. And there are some of those Oracle delivered Fluid for desktops. Uh, it's my understanding Simplified Journal Entry and Financials was built that way, mainly because Simplified Journal for Financials uses Pivot Grid Search. And Pivot Grids don't work on mobile today. So, and, oh, by the way, did I mention Pivot Grid Search is the primary search strategy for Fluid components? Whoa, wait a minute. Does that mean they won't work on mobile? Yeah. So the key difference between Classic and Fluid, Fluid has potential to be mobile. Classic doesn't even have that potential. Okay, cool. These are all in the correct order now. Let's see. Yeah, airlines, hotel, car. Awesome. Hey, my grid, Yuck, that looks pretty bad. In fact, I'll tell you, it doesn't even work. Why is that? When you drag and drop a grid on a page in Fluid, it defaults to the it defaults to a classic grid. So I need to go to the Use tab and change my grid to a flex grid layout. Now, a flex grid layout, the idea with Fluid, actually, the, the whole idea with Fluid is that Fluid is designed to reflow the content based on the shape of the container. So they call this a flex grid because you can see the columns are flexing with the size of my container. So that's why I keep this little visual here. You know, just like we call it fluid for a reason. It's like liquid. And the size of your container, or the shape of your container, determines how that liquid is going to flow. Fluid user experience. The content resizes, reshapes with the size of the container. Now I got something weird going on here. In design view, oh, Wait, actually, before we do that, you notice all these data entry fields are exactly the same length? That's weird. These are four different columns, and I can guarantee you they're using four different column lengths. They're all the exact same size. That's Fluid. Fluid does not resize data entry columns based on the, the, the metadata for the column, which is very different from Classic. Classic would resize. Now, notice the drop-down lists, they're resized. But if these were data entry fields, input type equals text, they would all be the same length. How do you resize those? That's a great question. Style classes. There are a couple documents out there you can find on Moss. Uh, the one, one of them is the Fluid UI CSS Guide. 
Uh, that's where it, you're going to find 107 pages of CSS classes that were created by Oracle with People Tools 854, released in 2015. Wait, isn't it 2020? Yeah, that's their most current document, released in 2015. Do you think they've added more style classes to the library since 2015? I hope so. I hope so. They're not documented, though. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and fix this layout here, because in Classic, they would have all been rendered according to what you see is what you get. Now they're all rendered vertically. What's going on? Hey, by the way, guys, we're at the 10-minute mark. We end here in 10 minutes, so I'm going to go through and fix this layout piece. That's about where we're going to end. If you have questions, go ahead and start queuing them up now just so we know what kind of runway we need in that last 10 minutes for Q&A because it's a hard stop. Uh, it says 45-ish because I'm going to go to the ish part is how many questions do you have queued up. Okay, great. Let me go ahead and fix this layout piece here. It looks like the fields are where they're supposed to be here, but on when, when we actually render the content, it's showing up in a different spot. So the question is, how do we fix that? Here's, a, here's how I like to say it. If you give a developer a layout issue, the developer is going to ask for a group box. The answer to every layout question, the solution to every layout problem is a group box. Here, let me show you. I'm going to open an Oracle delivered page. Uh, let's see. Page hree -E adder fl. See any group boxes there? Why'd they do all that? It must have had a layout issue. You know, I have one other saying I like. If you don't know what to do next, throw a group box at it. You can't go wrong. It's fluid. The answer to every question of fluid, group box. Okay, so let's throw a group box at it. We have a layout issue. You know what? Actually, I want to throw a group box at this one because this one here I want to label as my airline. See, in classic, we would have used we would have used group boxes for labeling purposes. Uh, let's see. Let's make this be the, apparently that didn't stick. Label short. Perfect. Uh, perfect. Okay. Label, car, auto, whatever you want to call it. This one's hotel. Okay, let's see what happens. So, hey, you know what? Wait, before we go any further, these are all rendered vertically. The question is why? Well, the first thought is, or the, let's just say excuse, is it's mobile first. Yeah, no. No, it's actually not because grids are not mobile, plain and simple. Grids by themselves are not mobile. They require effort on our part as a developer to change them into something that works better on a mobile device. Just warning. One should be aware of that. No, these are actually listed vertically because they're called in HTML. They're called block elements. A block element takes the entire width of the parent and only the height of the content. Here, let me refresh so we can see our group boxes in there now. Okay, air, hotel, and car labeling each of the sections. Group boxes are also block elements, which means they take the entire width of their parent and only the height of their content. So if we want three groupings, we have to shrink their parents. Honey? Yeah, you know I'm going there. Okay, so we need some way to shrink the parents. That sounds like a layout issue. So what's the answer to every layout question? Group box. Okay, so let's see. Let's go to our group box. I'm going to use a style class here. PSC column dash three. Question, where did Jim learn about that style class? It's documented in one of my favorite Moss documents, and we'll be sure to share these Moss docs with you through an email later as a follow-up because I don't have them in front of me. I apologize for that. Don't have them in the slides either. Uh, it, but anyway, the title of it is Converting from, uh, Converting from Classic to Fluid. It's a 25-page document, which is why I like it, instead of the 107-page document. Actually, I'll tell you what, I hate their strategy. It's an awesome strategy for Oracle, who needed to keep Fluid and Classic side-by-side -side coexist. Basically, what it tells you to do is clone your existing Classic to create a new Fluid by dragging and dropping your Fluid subpage or your Classic subpage into a new Fluid layout. Yeah, whatever. Don't do that. That's more work than you need to, because at the end of the day, you're going to have to create a new component, create a new component registration. You're going to have to add it to a new permission list so you can have Classic and Fluid coexist side by side. Tell me, who's going to do that as a customer? No. Oracle had to do that. That makes sense for Oracle because Oracle is giving us choice. You and I don't give our users choice. Just convert in place. It's so much easier. Anyway, the reason I love that document is because of Appendix 4, the very end there. It says, it has a page and a half of the most common style classes you and I would like to use. 
This is one of them, a page and a half. Not 107 pages, a page and a half. Okay, let's change this to layout only. PSC column dash three, okay, great. Now it's layout only, what does that mean? It means the group box is invisible, it becomes a div element in the HTML, which basically allows me to apply some structure. That's it. Now this group box, since it's going to be invisible, I'm going to repurpose the label here for documentation purposes. So anybody who comes after me says, oh wow, look at that, group box soup. Why are all those group boxes there? Ah, documentation, I see it. That's why the group box is there. It's applying a three column layout. Well, we know a three column layout must have three columns in there. So let's go to each of those columns and we don't need to, need to ask. We don't need to see the documentation for that. Three group boxes inside a three column layout, chances are they have the style class, PSC underscore column item dash one of three. The question is, is it one of three, two of three, or three of three? That's the question that we have to ask because we're not seeing any documentation because we're, we can't repurpose these labels, but otherwise we know these are columnar, they have to be. Okay, great. Let's save this, let's see, let's reload. Okay, air hotel and car. Okay, great, let me go ahead and hit the question since we have about four minutes left. And if we have time more, I've got more content I can continue going through, like where's the save button? That's a great question, isn't it? Where's the save button? How do you save this stuff? Anyway, let me take a look at the questions and see what's in here before I answer that question. Is it possible to share some tips to convert the custom classic pages to Fluid? Yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you, step one, open your component, check the box. Step two, open every single page within the component. Open every single page within the component. Add a group box. Drag and drop it around the outside. Make sure that group box is at tab order number one. If you need to, take the content, move it around. If you need to, stretch the size of the page. If you need to, shrink the size of your grids. Why? Because size doesn't matter anymore. Fluid control size. Make this guy be a little dot. It doesn't matter. Actually, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Make it big enough so the people who come after you can understand what's in the grid. I was just trying to make the point. It doesn't matter on size because fluid controls size now. You don't have to worry about size. Make it fit. Get that outer group box there. And when you get the outer group box there, make sure it has a style class of PS apps content. PS apps content. So let me go ahead and put that in the chat there just so you have that one. PS apps content. And let me send that to all. PS apps content, that's going to be the most important style class. Uh, let's see. Oh, before you do that, you also need to go to the page and check the box for fluid. This is just a safety checkbox. It doesn't actually change the way the content renders. It's only for de design purposes. It does give people stuff some metadata. So for example, with drop zones and when you're you, working with the fluid page, it's only gonna show you fluid sub pages, things like that. But otherwise, it doesn't have anything to do with the rendering engine. Let's see, other questions. Where can we go to see the CSS layouts and Moss land? Oh, you actually wanna see what they look like? No, there's no document like that today. I think as a community, we should create that. I think that somebody put out on GitHub, uh, here's what the CSS class looks like, or the name of it, this is the description, this is what it looks like. What you'll find in the 107 page document from Oracle, this is the class name, this is where the context, and this is what it, the description. No visual appearance of what it's going to look like. There is another um, help document out there that gives some of that. It is the um, Fluid UX Design Guidelines. Fluid UX Design Guidelines. You can find that. You can Google for that. Uh, sorry, internet search for that. Fluid UX Design Guidelines. Okay, if I want to add a field to a delivered Fluid page, would I add a drop zone? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you want to add a field to an Oracle delivered Fluid page, can you add the field directly just like you would in Classic? Yes. That would be a modification. Should you be looking at drop zones instead? Yes. Here's the thing about drop zones. Let's go to, let's go to the HRE adder FL page. Oh, I guess I closed it. Open page HRE adder FL. And inside here we see the your subcontent page goes here, view definition, and we see drop zone sections. Notice the drop zone sections are, oh, there are a few of them here. Any field you want to add to a drop zone is going to show up in these regions. That's the that's the design drawback, I suppose, to adding custom fields to fluid pages or classic pages for that matter with drop zones. You're restricted to wherever Oracle has already placed a drop zone. You know what I say? So what? Use them anyway. Make it work. Make it work. Somebody comes to you and says, I need this field over here on this page. Is it okay to say, I can't do that? That depends on your organization, isn't it? I would want to say that. I would want to say, no, we can't do that. 
That's what I want to be able to say. But I can give it to you down here. I'd want to be able to say that. That's up to you, though, and your organization, because you can't lie to them. But, I mean, because we have to stay current and for continuous delivery, we can't do that. That's a legitimate answer. Uh, okay, let's see. What else do we have in here? Oh, we're at time, actually, also, Scott. Um, so what we'll do is you can keep throwing the questions in there. We'll be sure to follow up with answers. We'll get a printout of the questions at the end. We'll write in all the answers and provide those to you in a follow-up email as well. So, Scott, I want to give it back to you because I want to be respectful of the time. Awesome. Jim, thank you so much. And, and you know, it's important to always leave them wanting more. So I think you did a great job of doing that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you very much, Jim, for your session today. If, if you want to see more of Jim, uh, he's actually doing a second session with us. It will be tomorrow, and it will, you will be discussing uh, data privacy in, in PeopleSoft and discussing uh, some security features and also presenting with Appsian's very own Greg Went. So that's tomorrow at 2 o'clock Central Time. Be sure to sign up for that. Uh, so I'd also like to encourage everyone to, to please learn more about Jim and the, the great work he's doing uh, with PeopleSoft and with Fluid. Uh, JSM Pros is the website. I'm sure everyone's familiar, uh, but if you're not, please go check him out. And uh, lastly, I'd like to mention that future PeopleSoft Innovation Summits uh, are currently being planned. So uh, we'll actually send out a survey on Friday, and we would greatly appreciate any feedback uh, that you have. And uh, we'd also like to encourage you to follow Appsian, uh, follow us on LinkedIn, follow us on Twitter, uh, so you can certainly be the first to learn about those future events. And, and of course, you can find us at www.appsian.com. Uh, next session is, is going to be a good one. I highly encourage everybody to attend. Uh, our, our good friend Sharon uh, at UNC Chapel Hill is going to be discussing uh, security and some of the roadmap features that they're rolling out for 2020 and beyond. So if you are in higher education and security is a focus, and I would hope security is always a focus, make sure you join that. It's, it's going to be happening in 13 minutes. So that's coming up next, and we'll see you again here at the top of the hour. Thank you so much. Thank you, Scott.